I won this at uh, TechCrunch Disrupt. Hey guys, welcome to another Soul Encoded tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about hackathons. Now, I really love hackathons. I've been to you know six or so hackathons so far. Uh, I've been lucky enough to win four of them, and we, our team actually won about $20,000 worth of prizes. And it really helped me boost my resume when I was first looking for my first software gig, right? So today, we're going to talk about the five tips that I have so that you guys can win your very first hackathon. Tip number one, don't be afraid. The number one mistake that people make when they are thinking about going to hackathons is that they're too afraid to even go, right? A lot of uh, new developers, they may think, hey, you know what? I'm not very good yet. I barely know how to make a website, you know? Very simple things like that. But I'm here to tell you that your odds are actually a lot higher than you might think. So the number one reason why you shouldn't be afraid is the competition. Right. So what are the types of people, I mean, who are the types of people that attend hackathons? Let's kind of run through them. This is what I've seen personally. Number one, new developers who wants to get a sense of making something or trying to improve their resume, right? Some, someone who are looking for that next uh, resume booster, right? A new developer, a junior level developer. Uh, number two, a seasoned hacker, someone who likes to hack on things, on the side who likes to go to hackathons to have fun uh, people like that uh, there's also developers who uh, professional developers there's surprisingly not a lot of professional developers who go to hackathons right because when you get to a certain level in your career a hackathon doesn't necessarily improve or improve your resume right so what ends up happening is a lot of developers just don't go to hackathons. You'd be very surprised. In the end, what you're left with are a lot of junior level developers, a lot of other non-developers such as product people or design people, and the last very small percentage of people are the people that are going there to win, right? So don't be afraid. The first hackathon that I won I made a simple product, which is just a basic website, and um, it was it was right after it was literally right after I learned about CRUD. We went, used what we learned, and we we won, right? So, uh, and it was a pretty significant one too, right? It was called Chimac th Chimac Three, and it was at Facebook. And here's a little clip of us winning. And that winner is Dear Ally. So that's tip number one. So the next tip that I have, tip number two, is to talk to your sponsors. Um, most hackathons are hosted by sponsors. They have sponsored prizes. For example, IBM Watson is at almost every hackathon that I've been to. Um, there's uh, tons of sponsors, right? Especially for big hackathons like TechCrunch, TechCrunch Disrupt, right? So the first thing you wanna do is find a good seat when you go to a hackathon, find a good seat. The next thing is you should go around and talk to all the sponsors and start getting an idea of what um, what you want to build. And the here's the main tip that I could give you, give to you when you're talking to sponsors. Um, don't just willy nilly just go to every um, sponsor and just you know ask them random questions. Ask them very specific questions on what they're what kind of apps they're looking for and what kind of apps they are not looking for. Because more so than not, uh, sponsors who go to these hackathons and to they they're putting up five thousand dollars, you know, two thousand dollars, whatever prize money that they have, they're trying to get something very specific out of that uh, particular um, prize money, right? So whether it be a great marketing uh, stunt, so let's say that Walmart is there and they have this new technology, uh, React Library or something like that, right? Then they want to see apps that uses that particular technology because that's the reason why they were there so that's the main thing that you need to think about you know ask them those questions hey what kind of apps are you guys looking for what kind of apps are you guys are not looking for and they will tell you because that's the reason why they're there right they want to have a great story when they present you with the prize 
They want to, you know, get that great picture with you uh, and that great article describing what your app was and how their technology made it so amazing, right? So in the end, all hackathons are essentially marketing. Uh, it's, it's basically a PR move for these big companies. So take advantage of that knowledge and then plan accordingly, right? So another tip on talking to your sponsors, um, try to incorporate a lot of the sponsors together, but mainly focus on one, um, one sponsor as your end goal. You could add other technologies, but make one of them very um, a big portion of your app because you know, when it comes down to it, the sponsors are the ones who are gonna give you the prizes for most hackathons, right? So they're gonna choose the one uh, app that uses their technology the most and their technology is the centerpiece of that particular application. Tip number three is go with the team. Now, there's some people who are amazing programmers and they could go to these hackathons and win all the prizes by themselves, right? But number one, that's not very fun. Number two, it's a lot harder for you to do that unless you're already a seasoned developer. So you need a product and design guy, you need a front end guy, and finally you need a back end guy. I feel like that's the most minimum. You could kind of get away with just having one front end guy. I would say the front end person, a front end developer is more important for hackathons than back end developers. Mainly because when you're giving a presentation to the judges, what they will see is essentially just views, UI stuff, right? And you just explain to them that certain things in the back end is happening. Of course, when they're judging, some judges actually look at the code base, but that I believe is more rare than not. But again, that doesn't mean that you can just skip all the APIs because you need to understand how they work, right? And that's where the backend guy comes into play. They need to actually hit the APIs that they're saying that they're hitting and actually understanding the limitations of the technology, right? Because then you might say something that doesn't make sense and it will bite you in the butt, right? And they could always go in and check your code base and then that's no fun explaining to them that like, hey, we actually, we actually didn't use any of your stuff, right? But you know what? The most important uh, thing about the team is that you understand exactly what your team is good at, right? For example, um, I could be good at front end and back end, right? But let's say that I'm way better at front end and I have another friend who is good at back end and he has some design skills, right? And when we come together and we start working on a project, I can trust um, him to get a certain portion done at a certain time. And the thing about hackathons is that you don't have a lot of time. Most hackathons are two days long, right? And the first day, the half of the day is spent uh, just talking to sponsors, you know, getting set up, thinking about an idea, prototyping the idea in your mind with your team, and then it starts, you know, building. So you really only have a day or a day and a half to get all of the pieces together and ready. And not only that, you have to work on a presentation. So someone needs to work on that as well. So having a good team, I suggest going with a team of four. Most hackathons team sizes are four um, is max. Uh, some are larger, but four is like a great way to go and you won't feel so much pressure to get things done. But make sure you have worked with these people before because that, that, that will increase their chances of winning the hackathon. Of course, you could go and have fun. If, you're, if that's your goal, then that's by all means, just go with anyone or go and just find people to work with. But if you're trying to win, go with the team that you know that can get certain pieces of work done. All right, now, tip number four. This next tip is kind of interesting. You might not think that this makes sense, but basically you wanna work from your presentation first and then work backwards. Uh, what that means is at this stage, uh, when you want to think about this, is you have already gone and talked to all your sponsors and you, you guys generally have an idea of what app you're trying to build. It can be really daunting to get started, right? So, and you don't have a lot of time at hackathons. Like I mentioned, you only have almost a day or a day and a half worth of time to code, right? And th that time goes by very quickly. So what you really want to do 
is look at uh, sketch up the views that you want to see and work on the presentation first you know so on a sketch pad or notepad or whatever just draw some squares if you're making an iOS app you know just draw quick squares and then do a rough outline of your presentation you could say something like oh on this view we're gonna have um, a user swipe left to right for the particular food and then uh, later on the user will see on this view and so on and so on and also minor tip but don't build a login page you don't need to build a login page that is assumed and most people some people waste time building the login page so don't build a login page but yeah so build out all of your uh, just mentally build out all of your views that you want to see and create a happy path right because in the presentation the presentations are usually two minutes Think about that. Like try to explain. So in the presentation, right, you have to also describe, um, you have to describe the app. You have to show the app. You, you also have to say what technologies you use, you use in the app. So there's so many things that you need to worry about, right? So two minutes goes by so quickly. And there's always this like kind of, every time I gave a presentation, there was some technical issue and I lost 30 seconds. So it has to be very quick. So and try to maximize for that two minutes. And because it's two minutes, you'll understand what features needs to get cut out. You know, if there's a feature that's amazing, but you can't present it, then it's not worth building, right? So think about that very carefully. So find your presentation, work from your presentation first, and then build your app based on that. Now, the most important tip, tip number five. I feel that this is probably the biggest factor when it comes to whether or not you will win the hackathon or not, right? Your team will win the hackathon or not. And that is knowing how to crunch. What I mean by that is that when it comes down to it, the hardest time at a hackathon is that point from midnight till the next day around like 8 a.m., right? Because the first day, like I mentioned, half the day is just kind of gone with getting, you know, introductions, you know, opening seminar, uh, opening ceremonies, people coming in and out. Like it gets, you know, and you're prototyping your idea. So you don't really get to code really, right? And you're, you also don't understand what your product is going to be, your prototype's going to be. So, but the thing is around midnight, that first night, that's when you know exactly what you need to build. And that's the time, that's the most important time when you start, when you need to start coding and cranking out code. I'm not saying like you have to spend the whole night up, but you know, every hackathon that I've won and I've been to, I ended up staying up the whole night. I mean, it's kind of fun, but at the same time, like it's one of those, it's that differentiating factor, right? Um, when I, when in the, in the first tip, I said, don't be afraid, right? I said, why is that? Because a lot of these developers who are professionals already, they won't have the same drive and motivations as you who are starting out to want to really win it, right? Because they don't have to win it. So there's, you know, at TechCrunch, when I was um, working, there, I, I was in this circular table with five other developers, right? And they're all, you know, some, from, some were from like LinkedIn, you know, some were from Twilio. There was all these like different companies there and they're very prominent engineers. They had like really good GitHub pages and stuff like that. I mean, GitHub portfolios, but they ended up not even presenting because in the end, they didn't feel like, they didn't feel like finishing those last eight hours or so that they needed you know they didn't want to stay up those like eight hours or so to finish their app right they had an interesting idea but they just didn't want to crunch because it wasn't worth it to them right but I hope it's worth it for you because let me tell you a hackathon is probably the best way to boost your resume if you don't have a technical background because it's something physical you could show to your cut uh, it's basically a portfolio piece a very simple portfolio piece that you could show potential employees and it's a great way for people who are um, looking for a way in to boost up their resume All right so knowing how to crunch is very important also your app doesn't really look 
amazing until those final hours when you're kind of crunched for time and then you're putting things together. And then it, for some reason, at the very end, near the end, it looks it looks awesome. And that's that was the way for me for every app that I made. So that's it. There you have it. My five tips on winning your first hackathon. You know, you should really go for it. Um, that's the number one thing I can say. And finally, one tip, don't cheat. You know, there's people who make their apps way before. Don't ruin it. Thanks.